Good evening, and thanks for joining this special T-Cubed, I'm sorry, T-Cubed webinar hosted by Texas Instruments, where tonight we're taking a look at the flip classroom with TI technology. My name is Mike Houston, and I'm the moder moderator for this event. I teach algebra and calculus near Pittsburgh, where I use TI technology to make tough to teach, tough to learn concepts accessible to all my students. Tonight, we're lucky to be joined by our two panelists, Tammy Casey and Audrey Cucci. Tammy lives in Lake Placid, where she formerly taught math for 18 years and is now currently the high school principal at Lake Placid. Tammy is a firm believer that students learn best when teachers involve their students in problem-solving activities and discovery-based learning that allow them to think outside the box and truly learn how to apply the math they see in the classroom. In 2013, Tammy was accepted as a New York State master teacher and she is a lifelong learner, learner who truly enjoys working with teachers who improve the quality of math education for students. Tammy, it's great to have you with us tonight. Thanks, Mike. Happy to be here. And Audrey is a T-Cube National Instructor and math, math, Mathematics Educator for a public school in New York. She has taught a wide range of courses, everything from eighth grade up to AP Calculus. In 2010, Audrey was recognized by the National School Board Association as a 20 to watch educator for her work with educational technology, used specifically the TI Inspire and TI Inspire Navigator systems, using them with her students. She was also named a master teacher for New York State and is the K-12 curriculum coordinator for her district. She loves having the opportunity to educate not only children, but educators as well. Audrey, thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to talk to other people outside of my home. No doubt. We're expecting a large crowd tonight, so your audio is muted. Feel free to send questions to Tammy or Audrey using the Q&A window on the right side of the screen. We'll also be using the chat window tonight to send general messages. As a reminder, this session is being recorded, and we'll provide a link to the event certificate of attendance at the conclusion of the webinar. We hope you don't have any audio issues tonight, but in the event that you do, try selecting Communicate from the very top of the WebEx menu and choose Audio Broadcast. At this point, Tammy is going to discuss our agenda. Welcome, everyone. So tonight what we're hoping to do is discuss a little bit about what the flipped classroom is, how to go about flipping your classroom, and focus on a few misconceptions, and then look at resources for how to actually bring this into your classroom. And then at the end, there will be a webinar drawing for registration for a T-Cubed Summer Workshop. Tammy, thanks so much. I'm giving you control. Feel free to share your screen. Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, we're going to start by talking about basically what an interactive or flipped classroom looks like. Um, and in, in the recent past, we know that some things have changed and we've kind of had to learn how to do this, a lot of us, on the fly. Um, those of you that have already started off with a flipped classroom, this whole idea of teaching during a pandemic has really um, brought this into light and really my, made my day quite a bit easier um, from the day to day. You wanna switch slides for me? Thank you, Tammy. So with the flipped classroom, we're talking about taking that classroom and flipping it on its head. Instead of sitting in our classrooms and lecturing to our students, we're making short videos or we are um, having them do readings outside of class and then coming in and, and using worthwhile, meaningful activities while they're in the class with us. All right, so what is a flipped classroom? Ideally or generally what we see happen a lot is students will, will view lecture videos um, prior to class and then class time is used to, you know, fix any misconceptions that they might have had coming in, do some practice problems, use hands-on activities and focus on group work. Um, so that typical lesson idea is really flipped upside down. What I've really learned from this is that in-class time really becomes the most important aspect 
Whereas we used to focus on what our lecture looked like. Now, less time is spent on that lecture and more time is really spent, you know, getting our hands dirty with the students. Tammy, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree that that class time is is um, is really the focus of um, the flipped classroom. I know a lot of times people think, oh, well, it's all about, you know, what you do outside of the classroom, and what the videos look like, but it's really um, having that that time in class to to take a look at what every student knows, what where they're struggling, what their strengths are and pushing them. Yeah, I, I know for sure that with my own videos, they are far from perfect. I am a far from perfect teacher. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a little while, why that's actually important uh, for the kids to see. So yeah, absolutely. The video, although important, not nearly as important as what happens face to face. And so I guess a question that I flip? Flip. Yeah, is why do we flip? Um, and so I know that um, some of you probably have started flipping. So in the chat, if you would, um, tell us why you're interested in flipping or if you have started, why, what made you start? Um, a couple of things for us. Um, I know my story was that um, I, I had been teaching for years. Um, I was, you know, fabulous being up in front of the classroom, writing on the board, you know, showing off my math skills. But then um, I'd look out at my students and I would get the feeling that they weren't with me. They would have rather have been anywhere but in the classroom. Um, and they just weren't getting what I wanted them to get out of that, that traditional lecture. And so um, that's basically when I said to myself, something has to change. Um, and what you see on the screen, those are all the things that I was kind of looking for when I decided to flip. Um, I really wanted to be able to get down with the students one-on-one, -on -one, figure out what um, their struggles were. And at that point, they had to come in for extra help for me to have that time. Um, I was looking for something to increase their motivation. So I wasn't looking out of the classroom and thinking, boy, something has to change. Um, just giving them the opportunity to really learn the material, not just watch and, um, and um, kind of play the game. Um, just doing exactly what I would do step by step. Yeah, the chat window is going nuts. I'm loving that everybody is really um, giving us an input. I did see something interesting about flexible surfaces and it got me thinking about what my classroom looks like. Um, I went in yesterday to pick up some materials I am teaching from home and uh, I look at, I have round tables and when I set up my classroom, I wanted to make sure that my classroom was never quiet. Well, you will see, <laughs> we're flip. Very seldom is your classroom quiet. Um, I use round tables, I put them in groups, I have expo markers. We use $20 bathroom board that I had my husband cut into rectangles and they use the expo markers and the whiteboards and it's constant communication. And that was a big reason and why I flipped. I felt like my kids were losing the ability to talk to one another. And that flipped model has really increased communication for my kids. And yeah, and they learned. They learn that they can't, that you're not the end all be all of, of the math education. You know, they can actually learn from their friends. They can learn from other students. They can help each other out. Right. There's nothing worse than standing in front of a class and talking to a group of children and them just blinking at you. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. You know? So seldom does that ever happen now when, when we're using that class time to really allow students to self-pace and, and work on their own skill and, and build on what they already know. Um, and taking responsibility for what they know and what they don't know. So that was yes. a huge reason I flipped. Yes, they're talking about math. Thank you. Um, yeah. Ninety-five percent of the time. Now I do also teach pre-algebra kids, so sometimes that's a little bit less than ninety-five percent of the time. <laughs> but they're generally talking about math, which is amazing to hear. Yeah, and then the last one here is just reduce or eliminate the homework frustration. And I think at home that helps too. I know I can imagine um, the frustration that's happening now with, with parents at home with their children um, in this situation. But if the homework is watch video or read whatever, um, students can handle that part. And then we're there when they have the struggle in class when they're actually trying to do some of the math. So there was a question, how do you flip if your school's not one-to-one? Um, I don't think a school has to be one-to-one. -one. 
if we're flipping, they're doing the video instruction or a reading uh, assignment or whatever you choose to flip with outside of class. My kids use their cell phones. They watch videos in the hallway. Um, when they come into school, it doesn't have to be technology based in the classroom to be flipped. You can use activities, uh, you know, create a spaghetti sign chart when you're doing trig functions, things like that, where you don't need to be one to one in order to be flipped. Yeah, we're not at it. It's hard when not all students have technology. Right. I would actually um, pull my students on day one of school and ask them, you know, if they had technology available at home, um, internet at home, and those students, any no's that I got back, I'd make sure to check in with those students on the, you know, during the first week of school and come up with a plan. You know, some of them maybe had to come to my room during the study hall or the time. We'd make it work. Yep. Okay, so somebody just asked, why make your own video when there's so many pre-made? We're gonna talk about that a little bit, so we'll come back to you with that one. All right, do we wanna switch pages? Sure. All right. So we're gonna talk about ups and downs. No, we're not. We're gonna talk about, uh, am I on the wrong page? Oh yeah, how do we flip? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's talk about videos. Um, I know Tammy and I did this a little bit differently as far as our, um, what we use to record our videos. So we're gonna look at uh, one way in just a couple of minutes, but how do we flip? Videos are a great choice. And why do I make my own? So that question came up. Well, because I'm their teacher. Um, and a lot of people choose not to use their own videos and that's totally fine. But with my kids, I want them to get used to my idiosyncrasies. I want them to get my humor. I want them to um, know who I am as a teacher and how I present things. So for me, personally, it was important for me to make my own. I don't know, Tammy, I don't know how you did yours. Yeah, I, I would mostly record my own videos. Um, I would try to though throw a couple pre-recorded videos from other people just so that they could get used to learning from somebody else. I felt like after a while they got so um, dependent on what I would say, that if I can share another video, they had a hard time with it. So I tried to do that more just so that, you know, they could really learn from anybody and tried to teach them that they could search. So if I made a video, they didn't understand it, there might be somebody else out there that it would make sense when they, when they said it. Yeah. yeah. Um, also with videos, if you're using different platforms, you're, you're able to do things like embed links within those videos or embed quizzes to check for understanding. Um, we're gonna take a look at the Inspire Navigator and how we use that to check for understanding when they come into class. If you're using videos, check out, it came up on here, how do you make sure kids are watching the videos? Check out Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is something we're gonna look at in a couple minutes as well. Um, it allows you to see whether or not the kids watch them. Now let's be honest, these are teenagers. We, we know how this works sometimes. Do I have students that press play and walk away? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, it becomes about how we make them accountable when they come into the classroom and whether or not they want to be part of the conversation. Um, and what I have found is they don't want to come into class and not be able to participate. They want to come in and be able to work with their peers in their small groups. Uh, so that did become something that was important to them. How about you, Tammy? How are your kids that are watching the videos? Um, when I first started, I, I basically just kind of sent a video out and said, please, please, please watch it. And um, not many would. Um, so what I ended up doing is we had um, Math Excel. Um, it's a paid program, but we had it at our school. And so what I would do is assign, um, you know, just like five quick questions after they watch the video so that whether or not they watched the video wasn't important, but it was, could they come into class doing what I wanted them to be able to do? And so then I would have that feedback before class even started so I'd know who I needed to check in with each day. Yeah, yeah. and we're gonna look at a way to check in, um, to check their understanding as soon as they come into class as well in, in just a couple minutes. So when we're talking about platforms, um, we, we are looking at things like using Edpuzzle. And Edpuzzle is free for up to 20 videos. Um, that is definitely has been my go-to for the past five years or so. 
Um, Kahoot Delta Math is a new one that's kind of come on the scene, and I have been absolutely loving that with my kids. So we're going to take a peek at that as well. Recordings. Um, smart. I use Smart Re Recorder. Cami, I think you used Camtasia when you were making yours. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. That's what I used. Yep. And then Screencastify is another one that pops up. It's free for under five minutes. And then practice. What are we doing in class? Um, with these. Delta Math, Math Inspired, which we're going to take a look at in a little while. So all of these things kind of come into play because now you have, personally, I have 40 minutes. I have 40 minutes of playtime with my kids. Um, so you're looking at different platforms to be able to kind of practice that information. Not all flipped classrooms are the same, so celebrate that. They shouldn't be the same. My classroom does not look like Tammy's classroom. Um, her videos, I'm pretty sure she used to have her face like she was in her video. I'm not willing to be in my videos because I make videos in my pajamas. So <laughs> it's just a kind of a difference of, of feel and what you want it to be like. And that's okay. It's okay to be different. They get used to seeing you in your doing? pajamas. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I put on, I kept on my daytime pajamas for this webinar. I haven't even put on my nighttime pajamas yet. So it was a big <laughs> that can be another one of our questions. How many people are, have changed out of their pajamas today? <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> okay, so you want to switch and we're going to look at the ups and downs, right? Yeah. Okay, go for so, it. I would say that um, starting out, when you first decide to, to flip your classroom, um, you have to really go into it knowing that it's not perfect. Um, you know, there are things that are going to go right, there are things that are going to go wrong. Um, and so I think what we wanted to share with you is just kind of our experience with, with some of those things so that if you do decide to do this, you can, you can go into it knowing our experience and, and hopefully learn from it. Um, I think the first one is notes. We, um, one way that I think that both Audrey and I had started out flipping um, was we would give our students notes and ask them to complete them. Um, that was kind of the accountability check. And, um, you know, in, in that situation, at least what I found, and I'll just add in your uh, experience, but I found that the students would just worry about writing down whatever I had on the page and not really about learning and how to get it done. Um, it was more about just checking the box to say that they had that part of it done. Um, did you kind of find the same thing? Yeah, it, and it really, I feel like that differs per level of student. You know, with my calculus kids, they're they're all in. With my pre-algebra kids, it's like, okay, I have to fill this space. Mm -hmm. um, so there is definitely definitely kind of a buy-in that has to happen, and an understanding as to why it's important. Um, we spend some time at the beginning of the year. I kind of taught them how to actually take notes because you'd be shocked on how many kids don't know how to take notes. Right. Even when they get to you if, and they're in 11th grade, a lot of them just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so we did do quite a bit of time just learning how. Yeah. Um, the other thing is make sure that you talk to somebody before you, you go ahead and do this. Make sure that you have support from your school um, because there might be resistance from the families. Um, so if you have the backing of your administration, it's going to be easier when the families start to say, well, you know, this isn't the way the school is supposed to look or, um, you know, whatever comes back. Um, you know, it is, it's different. And so when your child doesn't, doesn't have math, math homework or science homework or whatever every single night, um, you know, the parents start to notice. And so um, they will start asking questions. So just making sure that you have, have support before you, before you start. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you do have students who don't have computers at home, one of the things that my school did is they were given an older computer. Um, if they don't have internet, I copied their videos to a thumb drive and gave them a thumb drive with the videos and that alleviated that issue. Um, since it was, I didn't have a lot of students that weren't able to watch them. So, you know, kind of looks for those things. You're definitely going to want to question your kids at the beginning of the year about their accessibility. Yeah, and then the video grading, um, you know, for me, the learning really comes in class. You know, you're kind of prepping them for what happens in class in your videos. 
um, giving them kind of like background information. Um, you know, when I was in high school, the assignment every night was you know, do one through whatever, every other odd in the book, but then also read the next section. Um, and so that was kind of, in my mind, that was almost a flipped classroom at that point because I was prepping myself for what was coming up in class the next day. And so, um, you know, the grading, the video grading isn't necessarily the most important part. Whether or not they watch the video isn't the most important part. It's are they ready when they come in the door the next day? Right. And I think Tammy and I were probably very different, different high school students. Um, if I was asked <laughs> to do one through 20, I did one through three. Um, and so I was one of those kids who it's the struggle to reach them. Um, so for me, when I looked at this, my thought was, maybe I wouldn't have hated it so much in high school. This to me is a way to reach those kids who they're not going to go home and do 20 problems because one, they don't have the support and two, they don't have the motivation. Um, it's not something that, that really is important to them, but they'll watch a 15 minute video. And for some of them, they like that I'm there with them for 15 minutes. Uh, so, you know, it, it really reaches those kids that, that maybe you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Yeah, and then the, so what has gone right? I mean, whatever reason you're going into flipped classroom, uh, whatever your why is, um, you, you want to make sure that you, you kind of focus on that. You know, it could be um, the one-on-one, -on -one, focusing on the one-on-one -on -one time with your students. Um, it could be the, the knowledge retention. Um, you don't want them to be bored in class. They're complaining about homework. Their parents can't help them with homework. Um, whatever, whatever your why is, um, you know, kind of focus on that when you first start out. Make sure that you know you're you're reaching your goal, um, because really, it, it it's 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 really a game changer in the classroom. Um, I don't think I could go back if I were still in the classroom. I don't think that I would be able to go back after. Um, experiencing it for a couple of years, just the yeah. time for one-on-one -on -one attention with the kids, knowing exactly what they can and can't do every day when they leave the room, um, being be, being there for them really, and having them know that it's not just the you know the Tammy show, watch how fabulous I am at math, but really working, getting down and dirty, working with those students. Yep. Yeah. And what's nice is once you have the videos made, you have the videos made. I mean, you'll mm -hmm. definitely want to go back and tweak some of them because like I listened to my the first one I made and I was like, oh, good Lord, no, <laughs> I had to remake mm -hmm. it. Um, but then you have them. So, you know, I've taught, I, I'm teaching four different courses this year. And when we went into quarantine, um, I had videos done for three of them. And now I'm just having to make my pre-algebra ones as I go, which is incredible. But we, Tammy, we're at 823, we need to, Speed through things Move a little on. bit faster, I think. Yeah. So <laughs> let's go on to our common misconceptions. Okay. And we're going to kind of breeze through that part real quick, right? Um, yeah. This works for every every subject. This is not just a math thing. This is not just a, a science thing. This is a is an every topic thing, um, and it's not new. And you don't have to record your own lecture. So, you know, those are things that come up quite often. And it's, this is a big one. The students are not expected to teach themselves. Sometimes we get feedback when people get angry that the kids are teaching themselves. They are not. They are not, they are not, they are not. And I think that after this, the parents will know. <laughs> you know, they will very clearly understand what we do. Um, this is not a kids teach yourself type of thing. Yeah, and it's also, um, it's not, you, teachers don't have to create their own content. The question came up about why would you record your own videos? You don't have to. Um, there are, at this point, there are a ton of videos out there. Um, you know, and if you find some that you like and, and um, they work for you, use them. Um, you know, and especially the first year, you might want to start to create some of your own and use others and so you build, build up your own library. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? It's not uniform. Um, there's no evidence um, that it works. Those are, these are all misconceptions. And then the flipped classroom replaces the teacher. Um, for me, that's a big one. The flipped classroom replaces the teacher. I think a lot of times people say, well, okay, if the teacher's 
if they're getting the lesson at home, what does the teacher do in the classroom? So that's why that part is so important is what are you doing when, when you're in the classroom? Right. All right, so do, do make your videos relevant and engaging. I will tell you, I am weird in my videos. Um, there, I, I'm a goofy teacher as it is. You know, I'm the person that's yelling and dancing around in the front of the room. And I do that on my videos too. Um, I also make mistakes. And I feel like that's really important because the kids need to know that mistakes are going to be made and it doesn't give this false sense of everything has to be perfect on the first try. Um, so feel free, free to get things wrong. Um, it, it's okay and the kids need to see that as well. Uh, let the kids screw around. And what I mean by screw around is let them play in class. Let them get off topic and try something else and get excited about a tangent that they may go off on. Encourage them to talk and communicate. That's why I put them in groups. I think gone are the days of, of desks and rows. Um, it's so important that the kids learn how to talk when their face isn't in a phone. And this is an incredible opportunity to do so. Please, 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 please allow them to struggle. Um, when I'm having kids work on something in class and I'm walking around, if it's not right, what I do is I circle it and I smile at them and I walk away. And what that tells my students is, oh, Mrs. Cucci doesn't like this one. Let's, let's chat about it again. Let's see if we can figure out where we went wrong and fix it. And they don't, they don't rely on me to fix it for them. It's not, well, how do I do it? It's not what it's about. It's look at your, look at your table. Okay, where did we go wrong, guys? Where can we fix it? Why isn't what we got our answer to be correct? And that's a really incredible tool because it gives them the time to do that, whereas they couldn't have done that at home on their own. Yeah, Norman, one thing I started, system. Go ahead. I was just going to say one thing I started to do was um, I would actually uh, share the answers with my students um, so that they knew it wasn't about just that magic number at the end, but the process and how they got there. And so the conversations got um, deeper because they would then start to talk about how they did things different um, and not just about, oh, I got the right answer. No, everybody has that. It's how are you getting there? Right. right. Yep, absolutely. And really celebrate it. I mean, mm -hmm. when they get something and they're excited to tell you, celebrate it. You know, clap, have the whole class clap, make it make it a happy thing. It really allows kids to, to grow. Um, form an accountability system. I'll be honest, my accountability system for my ninth graders through my 12th graders, I have sticker charts in my classroom and they get so excited to put up their sticker. <laughs> so it works for me. Okay, so let's go on to the don'ts. Um, yeah. Don't use class time for busy work. Um, make it meaningful, make it helpful. Um, don't use class time to grade papers, but I think the worst thing that you can do um, if you are, if you're flipping your classroom is to have your kids come in and you be at your desk. Um, you know, you want to be there right there with them. You want to be checking on their, um, on their work, on their progress. Um, you want to be right there with them. Um, don't expect students to learn everything from the videos. Um, don't allow students to think that it's a novelty. Um, and, and don't make your videos too long. I found, I, I used to teach um, geometry was, was mostly what I would do. Um, and kind of like a five to seven minute video I found was kind of my, my goal. Um, they, can be, they can be too short, you know, 30 seconds or so, less than a minute is probably too short. But, um, you know, it depends on the level. Audrey, you said that some of your pre-calc calculus videos are more like 20 minutes, but they need to be yeah. at that level. Yeah, my calc videos, I mean, they range anywhere from 10 to 20, but, you know, in calculus, sometimes one question will take you 20 minutes. Um, it really just depends on the topic. But definitely, like my pre-algebra kids, five minutes is, I, you may lose them after that. Their, their attention goes elsewhere. My algebra two kids, I'm generally between eight and 15. It really depends. Um, but again, I'm, I also have some fluff time in my videos where I'm just, probably being goofy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then don't give up. It's easy to say, oh, this isn't working. They're not watching the videos. Um, but if you, if you commit to it um, and give it some time, 
you'll see that it becomes part of your routine and, and everybody will will figure it out. They'll adjust. Um, and then the other, don't go all in. I think both Audrey and I, we are those all in people. Um, <laughs> and so the first years, it was we're doing everything. And we did, and we stuck with it. Um, but it's a lot. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of commitment. Um, and so, you know, start with one thing. Start small. Start with one chapter. Chapter, one um, topic, one class. Um, and, and see how it goes from there. Or have a global pandemic and have to flip everything immediately. <laughs> That'll work too. <laughs> um, yeah, it, and it, we did. We both did the same thing. We were like all in right away. And I remember calling you up and being like, oh my God, <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do now? It, it takes a lot of time. And you're going to make that first video and it's going to be horrible. And it's okay. Um, go into it with the understanding that it's going to be weird at first, and it's very weird to hear yourself talking. You're talking to yourself. You're literally in front of your room talking to yourself. So it's a little strange. Um, it gets much easier with practice. Uh, so don't give up. It's an incredible thing. The worst thing you can possibly do is be the teacher that sits at your desk and have kids come up to you and, and you say, well, just watch the video again. Don't do it. It's the, it's the quickest way to make this fail. Um, you won't sit down anymore, and that's a beautiful thing. Should we go to how? Sure. Okay. We're at 8.32. We're doing okay, I think. Okay. All right, so how technology. Um, I use a Lenovo ThinkPad. It has a built-in stylus. It's a pretty amazing laptop. If I'm at school, I use my smart board. Um, with a wireless mic. So that's, you can use your iPad, you can even use your phone. We are going to get to the TI tools. Yes, absolutely, we're getting there shortly. Um, platforms, Edpuzzle, Delta Math, we'll take a peek at those. Softwares, I think we already hit on a lot of this, didn't we, Tammy? We did, yeah. Asia, smart notebook, it takes time, you're gonna mess it up, so start small. Yep, we can keep moving, we'll get to some of the TI stuff. Okay. Okay. Smart notebook, this is just where to find that recorder. If you want to click to the next one, you'll get a bigger picture of what it looks like. And again, it is free. Um, this is what I use. Uh, you cannot edit these. These are not editable. So not in smart recorder. So if you're going to make mistakes, they're going to stay. Camtasia, you can, you can um, edit. Yeah? Right. Yeah. Okay. We're killing it, Tammy. So for I'm platforms on the back. <laughs> <laughs> for, for platforms, um, we're going to take a look at some of these. We're also going to take a look at some of the um, the TI tools that you can use um, if you're flipping your classroom. So um, YouTube, a place to store videos. Edpuzzle, we took a look or we talked about a little bit, um, but we're going to look at that one a little bit more in depth. Um, Google Classroom, I'm sure in, in this day and age, um, most of you are probably familiar with Google Classroom and how to store things, share things um, through that. And then Delta Math, um, I think is newer, um, and Audrey's going to show us a little bit of how she uses that. And I'm seeing a lot of people are commenting about Zoom. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I basically live on Zoom now. It's my day-to-day. -day. That's how I'm meeting with my kids every day. Uh, right. They do have an option to record. Um, when you're running a Zoom session too. So yeah, that's available as well. Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay, so I'm gonna hand you over the screen. Okay. So, can you see my screen yet, Tammy? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so what you're seeing right now is my Edpuzzle. Um, when you log into Edpuzzle, this is kind of what it looks like. If you look along the left-hand side, I have my classes. Um, what I have done is I've created open classes for students that are in other schools that needed access to videos. So I have some open classes for kids that just need a little support from an outside teacher. Um, and then my classes that I teach generally, AP Calc, pre-algebra, pre-calculus, and algebra two. Notice along my stream, I have my due assignments. And 
if you look, I've got my assignment here, and this was a longer video at 17 minutes, 2.1, my due date, and then how many kids turned it in. So generally speaking, I have pretty good numbers, 17 out of 18, 15 out of 17. So these are not too shabby um, for my Algebra 2 kids, which is quite nice. Now, in these videos, you can embed questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one in my content section of one that I made. Now, this is where I personally store all my videos. I've been using Edpuzzle for so long that uh, I grandfathered in to be able to store all of my videos. So I do have um, hundreds and hundreds and <laughs> hundreds of, of videos in Edpuzzle. Um, now you have to pay for that. I don't know what it costs. But this is just a little Edpuzzle video that I created kind of for training purposes. And if you notice, there's a little icon right here. That little icon tells me that I have a question embedded in the video itself, um, which is a great way for the kids to check their understanding as they're watching the video. So, and I will fast forward through this because we are not watching three minutes of me talk to myself. So when you get to the video or the question, it'll pop up and you'll see what that looks like in just a second. So as you notice, it popped right up on the side. It was a multiple choice question. What two methods allow us to grab and drag on our calculator? So this is kind of a nice way if you want to teach the kids how to use their calculator, you can make these short little videos with questions embedded and it tests their skills. Um, so this, I ran a, a calculator boot camp one summer for a group of kids when we first started using the Inspires. Um, and I used these little training videos with them and it's nice because they can go back in and they can rewatch the videos if they forget um, how to do something. So this is that puzzle again, all of your content can be stored in one place, which is great. You can embed questions, and most importantly, you can get to my classes. You can see um, your students' progress. You can see how many kids have watched the video, how much time they've spent. I can't go into them because I can't show you my students' names, but it allows you to see how much time they spent on the video as well. So if your video is 13 minutes long and they spent exactly 13 minutes, chances are they didn't pause and uh, take any time to do any of the extra pieces. So that's Ed Puzzle. The other piece I wanted to show you is I wanted to show you Delta Math. So Delta Math is kind of new on the scene, or maybe it isn't, and I'm just new to it. Um, I do have the Delta Math uh, Plus which was an extra $50 and I spent it because what that gave me is it gave me videos embedded in with every problem type, which is incredible. So that helped me out big time when it came to my pre-algebra. I use this platform in my classroom with my pre-algebra kids. They run a self-paced module based um, flip. So they watch a video and then at their own pace, they go through the material. So you know, if I have 25 kids in a class, not a single one of them is working on the same problem. They're all over the board, um, but it works well for me. So that's what I, I choose to use. So I just wanted to show you an example of this. So what I did is you can search for any content here, right? So right now I have systems up, but I have seven different classes checked here. So middle school, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus -calc and computer science. I have those all checked off, which means I have all of the content for those classes. And each one of these opens up to include different problem sets that the kids can try out. If there's a little clock next to them, it means that it's time, okay? Um, so I wanted to show you one of them, which was really great because sometimes systems of equations is something that I know my ninth graders struggle with and elimination specifically. So I, when I click on this elimination guided, this will literally take them through and walk them through how to solve a guided problem. So, you know, if we're looking at this problem, how do we get something to eliminate? Well, if I keep that at multiplied by one and I multiply this by four, uh, yeah, obviously, Audrey, um, what that does for me is it gives me my new numbers 
So 13x and 0y is equal to, right? So it, it walks them through step by step in solving an elimination problem. Now, if they still needed help, they could watch a help video when it pops right up in the question, which is fantastic. Um, the other thing that they can do right in this is they can, um, well, I'm in my, if I was in a student version, they could show example and an example would pop up for the kids to look at. It wouldn't be the same one, but it would be an example similar that could help them walk through it. So it really gives them different ways to kind of um, figure out how to do it on their own. Again, that, that productive struggle, right? So that, those two things for me have really guided my flipped classroom um, and helped me out immensely. Tammy, you use Edpuzzle, correct? A little bit, not too, too much. I, um, I just started to learn about it and then um, moved out of the classroom. Yeah, you went to the dark side. Yes. <laughs> That's what they call it. <laughs> we still like you. Oh, thanks. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the Inspire Navigator. Now, I started using the Inspire Navigator maybe 10 years ago. Um, I will never, ever, 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 ever go back to teaching without a navigator system. It, it was a game changer for me um, because it really allowed the kids to take over the classroom, which is what I wanted. Um, so when we're talking about accountability, after a student watches a video, what I ask of them is when they come into class, the first thing they do is they put the network manager on top of their calculator, they log into my classroom, and they take what I call um, a quick check. And all it is for me is, is a one question, multiple choice, based on the video from the night before, just to gauge their understanding. And that one question really allows me to lead my kids where I need them to go uh, for the rest of the lesson. So I just wanted to show you kind of how that works in my classroom. So I, um, I'm already logged in, so notice that my two students here, Audrey and Julia, are bolded. They are logged into my classroom. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna send to them a one question quiz. So this little yellow arrow pointed at their heads, I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna find the file that I want. There it is. I'm gonna click next. It's going to a folder labeled practice class, which is fine by me. And I'm going to hit finish. Now, what happens is it populates over to my class record. And if you notice, both of my students are green. And what that means is both of my students got the quiz. And notice how fast that was. That was really, really fast, right? It's not spending time passing out papers and then collecting them back and grading them. This is all going to be real time, instant, fast, 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 which is what I need in order to gauge their understanding. So now I'm going to use my capture class and I'm going to take a peek at what both of these students are doing. And um, to make it a little bit easier for us to see, I'm just going to zoom it all. So these are both of the calculators right now. And I'm going to open them. I'm not going to save changes. And if you notice, my students are working in real time. So they're going to answer their questions. Now, I wouldn't have this up on the screen, obviously, because I don't want the students giving away the answers. Um, but I know as the teacher that, th that this is what's going on on their handhelds. It also allows me to see if they're going out and they're graphing it or if they're doing anything different that I might want them to show the rest of the class. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blue arrow away from my kids' heads. I'm gonna select it. And I'm gonna delete it from them because I don't want it hanging out on their handheld. So now I have it. So what I do next is after, and this should be quick. I don't, this isn't an extended amount of time activity. I'm not giving them the entire class period to think it through. It should be quick. It send it out three minutes, you're done. I'm collecting it back. Let's see how we're doing. So let's see how we did. I'm gonna open it in review workspace. Here was the question and here's my student data, okay? So if you notice right now, 
it doesn't show if either one of them are correct or incorrect. And I do that for a reason. I don't want the kids to know right away if they were right or wrong. I want them to question it. I want them to say, oh, but we got three. What if, is it three? What did I do wrong? Did I do something wrong? Or I want them to be solid in their understanding of what they're doing. And this bring, brings up a really good conversation, right? So if one says, person says negative two and the other says three, now the conversation ensues. Well, what does the three represent in the graph? How can we visually understand what that three does? What can we do to get a better look at this? I can come up here and click show correct answer and see how we did. If 20% of my kids got it right and the rest got it wrong, I know that I'm gonna have to do a little bit of reteaching, reteaching um, before I can move on to the activity for the day, which is okay. Allow this to guide you through that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save it to my portfolio. And the portfolio is basically the grade book that's built into your um, Inspire Premium Teacher software. And if you notice, it has both of us here. Um, by the way, my daughter is Julia, that's her name. I can't believe I gave her the 100th. She'll thank me later. Um, I am at 0%, Julie is at 100%, and it keeps track as we go along. And what this is great for is when we get to the end of the school year and we have to start looking at review, I go back and I resend all of the ones that less than 85% of the kids got right. And we try it again and we see if our understanding has grown. Um, and it really allows me to, to cater my review to my students' needs. Uh, which has, has been great for, for state testing review. This, the navigator is like life saving. Plus it grades it for you. Did anybody else notice? Like it graded it for me, I didn't have to grade it. Um, so there is no more taking home that, that bell ringer and grading it, it's instant, it's done. The data is there um, and the kids see it. Now, I very well could have taken and sent my kids a quick poll instead this is a quick poll here and it's basically any question type and it's on the fly and you can send it to your kids i often send quick polls during the class just to kind of gauge how they're doing um, if i'm not hearing kind of some of the things that i want to hear as i walk around um, i i will shoot out a quick poll my quick checks at the beginning of class i do make ahead of time because uh, i will be honest with you i'm not great on the fly i like to have things pre-made because my spelling is horrible. Um, so, you know, if I don't want the kids to laugh at me. I do like to kind of have them made ahead of time. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to make sure we hit on is something called live presenter. Um, and somebody asked if you will get this presentation at the end. I believe Mike will send that to everybody if, I, if I'm correct. Um, okay, so what am I doing? So when I want to look at Live Presenter, what I have to do, and I'll walk through it one more time, is I use this little icon that looks like a camera. I capture my class. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to double click, make me big, and uh, make myself a presenter. So what that allows, it is allows my students to now be in charge. So I don't spend very much time at all up in front of the classroom, very little, um, almost never. What this allows my kids to do is now say, okay, if we wanted to talk about that two X plus three and we wanted to talk about why the slope is negative two and the Y intercept is three, I'm gonna ask them to graph it for me. And this is gonna come up on their screen and then we can have a conversation with this. Or maybe I'll ask them to graph just my parent function. And then we can talk about, okay, Julia, I want you to take this and I want you to transform it or translate it so that it gets closer to what my equation is. Now, may, might not be perfect, but let them play. They really like to play. Um, so they can take things and move things around. And again, it might not be perfect, but who cares? Um, let them mess things up. Let it get messy, let it get dirty, right? So that's pretty close. So now they're kind of understanding the difference between, okay, the slope is when it changes its 
incline, it's rise over run, it's rate of change, right? All of that stuff you kind of talk about what a positive slope looks like and what a negative slope looks like and then how we work with, with um, y-intercepts. So that live presenter is incredible. Also with the live presenter, it is like a gift sent from heaven for the students who want all of the, the attention in the world and try and get it verbally. Um, what I have found is if I have that attention seeking kid, I will go up to them and, and tell them, listen, I will let you be live presenter today, but you, you have to make sure you keep it under wraps. And I'll tell you, they love it. Even, even the kids that don't want anybody to know, notice the student name isn't up here. They don't want anybody to know that they get this stuff and they like it. You can make them live presenter and they can show off without anybody else knowing that they are the ones showing off. So it's really, again, getting to all of those kids that you may not have reached otherwise. The Navigator and Flipped Classroom together are like a match made in heaven. Tammy, I know you used Navigator quite a bit in your classroom as well, right? Yeah, I did. Um, and it is. It's, it's one of those things that once you get it, once you have it up and running, it, you go back. Um, it, it really does. It, the, just the instant feedback, being able to see what they're working on all the time. Um, and I would even actually use it. Like I um, got to the point where I would make myself live presenter so that I, I was using the handheld. So it would make me mobile. I could wander around the room um, and they could see what I was doing, but it would slow me down a little bit because I was faster when I was using the computer. So um, yeah, even well, you know, there's research behind peer instruction and kids retention um, of information. It's it's Kids retain information better from their peers than they do from us. So let them teach. Mm -hmm. They love it. And they're, they oftentimes can give a secondary explanation that, that the other kids will get. Um, mm -hmm. So that's awesome. And they, again, taking responsibility for their education and, and really being part of, of building that knowledge. How are we doing? Do we have any questions? Audrey, I was going to mention that. There have been uh, a boatload of questions that have come in, um, <laughs> so many so that uh, I'm going to mention that I think people can hopefully try and get those, some of those questions uh, addressed maybe over social media. Um, but there really are honestly probably too many questions to try and get answered uh, between now and the next eight minutes. So I have a, uh, my Twitter handle is at Audrey Cucci. Um, you can always tweet me questions there. It's just my first and last name. Um, feel free to ask me questions there. I am on Twitter um, or email. You can email me as well. I think our, e our email address is on this mic. I'm opening myself up to so many emails. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of people on tonight. Um, I don't yeah. think, uh, unless you put your email on your PowerPoint, uh, it's not on mine. Okay. All right, so um, Tammy, I think where we're headed next, we have five minutes before we have to, four minutes before we have to allow Mike to take over. We want to okay. switch to Dad, I have to stop sharing. Okay. And then I will pass it back to you and we'll look at that math inspired, I know is one that we want to definitely hit on. Yeah. Math and science inspired for our science friends. During okay. class times, what do we do? Lots and lots of different activities, guys. So you're looking for things they can get their hands dirty with, and we're going to look at that right now, classroom activities. Okay, so you can see my screen, right? Yes, sure can. Okay, so what I have up is, um, is the TI website, education.ti.com. And really quickly, I'm just going to kind of point you in the right direction to find some activities. Um, at the top here where it says activities, um, if you hover on that, little bar, um, a drop down menu comes down and there are a ton and ton of different resources that you can um, you can look at. So it depends on, on what you're using. So if you are um, using 84s, there's a 84 Activity Central. Um, if you're using Inspired, there's Math Inspired. If you have middle school students, Building Concepts um, are fabulous activities. And if you're looking for things to do um, more in the STEM field, there's STEM activities, there's Science Inspired, 
Um, and if you have things like TI Innovator, Rover, um, there are also activities for those. Um, I'm going to go into the 84 Central because we really haven't done much for the 84 this evening. And so if we look at the 84 Central, um, along the side of the screen here, basically you have a ton of topics. And if I click on geometry, um, it first of all will give me some featured activities that you can you can look at right away. Or if you're looking for a specific topic, you could go in and um, and pick the, the topic. So if I were to select triangles, I can go in, kind of get a summary of what the activity is um, and, and a little preview. And then I can get more information on what exactly that activity is. Um, off to the side here, you can download all the files. There are, uh, there are student activities, um, teacher notes, um, and the, the document itself. And so you can, you can download those and put those right on the calculator. Um, if we go back, Math Inspired, um, the, the Chi Inspired version looks exactly the same. The activities are right on the side of the screen. Uh, pick the topic or the class that you're looking to find activities. Again, there are featured activities, or you can go in and um, select a topic. And then again, you can get a preview of what the activity entails. And then there's all sorts of different, um, different downloadable um, files to go along with that. And if we have any science teachers out there, I mean, really look into that. I, I know that um, we, we see a lot, of, a lot of math pop into this, but, and there's some incredible different probes that can be hooked up to your calculators, temperature probes, CBRs, pressure probes, things like that, that really make for some amazing mathematics. I know we do the Barbie bungee when we talk about um, sinusoidal functions, and it's such a cool way to, to use my class time um, that is different from just kids talking at me. They really have a great time with that. Okay, so I think that's all we have for tonight. Thank you for joining us. We're going to turn it back over to Mike. We finished right at 8.57. I'm so proud of us, Tammy. <laughs> Thanks so much, Tammy and Audrey, for everything you shared tonight. Uh, again, I did notice that we had a lot of questions uh, throughout the, the evening here. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but I'm going to make a suggestion uh, that we bring back uh, Tammy and Audrey, uh, maybe even this summer, to do a, maybe a, a webinar just looking at uh, the questions that you all asked and uh, that we would just start addressing all those questions. These, again, there, there were a lot. We're excited that uh, we have a bunch of T-Cube summer workshops that are hopefully coming to an area near you. Uh, we're also offering the summer uh, virtual workshops as well as face-to-face. -face. Uh, so please visit our website, education.ti.com forward slash T3 summer workshops to learn more about what's being offered and where. We're also giving away to one lucky winner tonight a free uh, T-Cube summer workshop registration. And tonight's lucky winner is Max Profit. So Max, congratulations. We hope to see you as well as everyone else at a T-Cube Summer Workshop. And Max, we'll be sending you an email in a couple of days to give you a little more information. To receive a certificate of attendance, go ahead and click the link in the chat window. Also list this link for the documents that were used tonight by Tammy and Audrey. And if you aren't able to access those links tonight for any reason, don't worry. You'll automatically get a follow-up email in a couple of days. That follow-up email will contain a link to the recording, a link to the certificate, and a link to the documents as well. And if you're watching this on demand, go ahead and copy that link into your favorite browser to receive your certificate. Please feel free to stay connected uh, to us on any of those major social media outlets. Um, again, I know that Audrey shared uh, her Twitter handle. Feel free uh, to use that and uh, to continue some of the questions and the conversations that were started tonight. If you're in need of any post-webinar follow-up, give us a call at 1-800-TI-CARES or send us an email at ti-cares at ti.com. We'd love to hear from you. Lastly, whenever you leave the webinar tonight, a brief survey will automatically appear in your browser. Your feedback guides us as we plan future online events, and we really hope you share your thoughts. 
Audrey and Tammy, thanks so much for putting everything together for tonight. Uh, it's definitely, uh, I think, uh, very appropriate for what's, uh, what's going on with education currently, and uh, so thanks so much for sharing everything that you did. Thank you. I had a great time. Thanks, Mike. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. We hope to see you back online real soon. Have a great night. Night.